So my parents were both immigrants from China. Um, and growing up in Hawaii, even though the majority of our population is Asian American and Pacific Islander, the reality is most folks in Hawaii have been here for multiple generations. And as the child of immigrants, growing up and attending public school, going to Iolani after that, I was definitely in the minority. And I think that gave me a sense of being the underdog here and of having to fight a little bit to get into you know, the mainstream culture and the mainstream circles. And it made me more sensitive to the plight of other groups who are you know, very much more clearly marginalized in our society today, including notably Pacific Islanders and Kofa migrants from the three Kofa nations. In Hawaii, the mainstream opinion about the Compacts of Free Association, the COFA agreements that we have with the Federated States of Micronesia, the Republic of Palau, and the Republic of the Marshall Islands, is that the United States conducted atomic testing there in the 1960s that resulted in a lot of health problems for the residents, which is true, and that the United States feels bad about it now, and so gives aid, allows these migrants to come to the United States to receive medical treatment, um, and that's part of the picture, but the reality is actually much deeper. Even though these nations have small populations, even though economically they're not well developed, the surface of the Earth's ocean that they cover is vast. And when you add up the three Kofa nations, we're talking about well over three million square miles of the Earth's surface, which is much larger than a lot of the nations like India that we think of as enormous. And they're very strategically positioned because if you look at them on a map, in the Western Pacific, the area that they cover is a vital strategic lane by which the United States traverses the Pacific Ocean to access our allies and our friends in the Indo-Pacific region. In other words, if another country were to be allied with these three nations and controlled these shipping routes, these air uh, rights, the United States would be effectively cut off from the Indo-Pacific, and it would be a devastating blow to our national security. Here in Hawaii, they are a labor force that has powered our tourism industry, among many other sectors of our economy. Before the pandemic, we had an unemployment rate that was 2%. We had a uh, labor force that was totally maxed out. Without the COFA migrants, our economy would have come to a halt. So the United States actually benefits on two dimensions one on the national security dimension, but also we have access to this fantastic labor pool. Um, I should add that that makes us sound like, you know, we're exploiting these nations for their resources, and maybe in a sense we are. But I believe that it is our duty as the people of Hawaii exercising the spirit of aloha and welcoming communities that we have always done um, for over, uh, well over a hundred years now, that we will one day recognize the Micronesian communities and the Micronesian cultures as just as integral, as just as vibrant, as just as value giving a part of our island fabric as we see the Chinese or Japanese or Korean or Filipino communities in Hawaii today. I wish that the people of Hawaii could see incoming Kofa migrants and immigrants from across the world as startups. Okay? You give them a little bit of venture funding, teach them English, teach them how to drive, teach them how to gain the necessary skills to be part of our labor force. They will then work hard. They will then bring up natural born citizens of this country for whom English is their second language. And each of those angel investments will pay off with 1,000x or 10,000x returns to this country. How do I know that this is true? Because it has happened time and time again for each generation of immigrants that have come to this country. The reality is that most of the immigrants that we have in Hawaii are here with legal status. They may be here on work visas, okay? They may have green cards, but they just don't know that they have to take a further step to apply for full citizenship in this country. And that's where the legal clinic comes in. 